Hi there, I'm the underscore twig, and I like analysing game rules. The Playtest 8 Barbarian is next, and we're looking pretty good. Bobby only really had one issue in the last playtest, which was just that there wasn't really much of a reason to go past about level 8 on most builds. The higher level features all either just sucked or were so late that they weren't worth the investment. That's the one issue that they needed to fix with this playtest. These lot are definitely worth the investment though. They support me on Patreon, which really helps out. In return, they get to see my videos early on my private Discord. There's also currently an audio-only version of a Locate Objects video, which I'm going to finish editing and release after I've done with the rest of this playtest. So if you want to listen to that like a week or two early, come join us. SK is also just a super cool dude. You'd like him. He makes awful builds. So there aren't a huge number of changes to the base class since Playtest 7. Only five, I think. As such, I'm going to skip over most of it and only focus on the new stuff. If you want to see my opinion on the rest of it, here's my Playtest 7 video. First change, Rage. You now regain one Rage every short rest, just like the new version of Channel Divinity and Second Wind, amongst many other similar features. Some of you may remember that way back in Playtest 5, I spent like a full minute just wailing on Watsy for nerfing Rage by turning it into a long rest feature when it used to be a short rest feature. I forgot that that was a homebrew I run. Raw, Rage has always been a long rest feature. This is nice. Combined with the 10 minute Rages, the bonus action extends, and later on, Persistent Rage, you'll be far more likely to have all the rages that you need. That also means that you can use the out-of-combat benefits from features like Primal Knowledge more often. This is a good change. I like it. Next, we skip forward to level 9. Brutal Critical was basically the poster child for high-level Barbarian. A bit of extra damage on a crit? Oh boy! Share my only crit 9.75% at the time. It was such a tiny boost, but now it's gone, and it's been replaced with an actually pretty cool feature, Brutal Strike. Much like the Rogue's new Cunning Strike, this effectively says that you can give up a small benefit to create a control effect. In this case, when you use Reckless Attack, you can give up advantage on your first attack roll, and if you hit, you deal an extra 1d10 damage, and also push an enemy 15 feet and move towards them, or reduce their walk speed by 15 feet for a turn. So first, I want to point out that Reckless Attack has to be activated when you make the first attack roll on your turn, and so you can only use Brutal Strike on your first attack. You can't finish off a low HP monster and then run over and shove another guy. I'd probably like to see this change so that Brutal Strike is just an open once per turn. Second, the feature says that you can forego advantage. There's some debate about what happens if you have multiple sources of advantage, say you were using Reckless Attack but also the enemy was prone. My reading is that you give up all sources of advantage, so you would be attacking that prone enemy at neutral. Similarly, if you are in darkness, so you have disadvantage because you can't see the enemy, but also advantage because they can't see you, and advantage because you're using reckless attack, normally this would just cancel out to neutral. When you use brutal strike though, you give up all sources of advantage, so you only have disadvantage because you can't see the enemy. Next, let's look at the damage implications. You're giving up advantage, so you're less likely to hit, but you also deal an extra 1d10. The exact difference in damage will depend very much on your specific build, but I tried a whole bunch of comparative calculations, and the majority showed that Brutal Strike does about 1 to 2 DPR less. I think the absolute worst case where I was stacking as many damage dice as possible on a disadvantage situation with only 2 attacks was about a 5 DPR drop, so it's not exactly massive. In return, you get to shove someone 15 feet with no saving throw, and then follow them, provoking no opportunity attacks. That's absolutely worth it. It stacks with push, it can activate cleave, it can isolate enemies away from your allies, it can help you disengage, it does so many different things. I will quickly mention that this movement is not free. It still uses up your 30 foot movement pool, or whatever your character has. The other option is hamstring blow, decreasing an enemy's walk speed by 15 feet. That's typically not going to be as good as shoving them 15 feet, but I will point out that if you're using a weapon with slow mastery, that's now 25 foot reduction probably almost a full movement denial. An example of this is the javelin, which you can obviously throw. This is in effect a ranged lockdown option, which is actually really nice. Force the enemy to stay inside your druid's dawn spell or whatever. Skipping forward to 13, we have a brutal strike improvement, which gives us two more options. Now we can give the enemy disadvantage on their next saving throw. That's absolutely cracked. So many of the best effects are saving throw effects. Give them disadvantage against the bard's mass suggestion, or keep them in Otto's irresistible dance. 
What I would say is that if you're planning on using this option frequently, you may want to avoid topple masteries. In many situations, this is too good of an effect to waste on topple. To make this feature even better though, it also removes their opportunity attacks, so you can run away to avoid getting yourself stuck in the middle of a reverse gravity. The other new option is Sundering Blow, which lets you give your allies a plus three to hit on the next attack against that enemy. That's kind of sucky compared to save disadvantage, but at least your Brutal Strike is now probably net positive damage. And it's a huge benefit to classes like the Rogue who have one big attack that they can't afford to miss. It's also quite nice on the Wild Heart Wolf Barbarian, who can now give advantage and a plus three to hit. At 15th level, Persistent Rage got an upgrade. Now, once per day when you roll initiative, you can regain all uses of rage. Nice. That means that you have a bare minimum 10 uses per day, plus however many you got from short rests. You can practically spam your rage out of combat now. A noteworthy point is that you also don't need to be completely out of rages. Some of the subclasses have a feature that lets you spend a rage use to do a different effect. So if you only have one use left, but want to use your subclass feature in that fight, then you can still pop your persistent rage. Another upgrade that it got was a quick rewrite, so that the point about rage only ending when you fall unconscious actually works now. Previously, it only added another redundant end condition, rather than replacing them. At 17th level, Brutal Strike gets another upgrade, so it now does 2d10 damage. That's definitely going to be damage positive now. And you can also use two different Brutal Strike effects at the same time. That's just incredible. You can give someone disadvantage on their next saving throw, and also push them. Finally, 20th level Primal Champion got an upgrade so that your Strength and Constitution now max at 26 rather than 24, which accounts for the upgrade to the air size at 19th level. So, I've got an 8th level Barbarian. Do I want to invest further or multi-class out? Brutal Strike at 9 is an okay feature. I might want it, I might not. It probably depends on how good my subclass's 10th level feature is. Assuming I do go to 10, do I continue in Barbarian? Again, maybe. Relentless Rage is meh. Eh. But then there's an ASI, that crazy staggering blow, and a subclass feature. I could see myself going for that all the way up to 14. Now I'm at 14th level, do I keep going? Persistent Rage is good, and then there's another ASI. And then that 17th level Brutal Strike improvement is great. By that point I'm 17th level, only two ways away from 22 strength, and then one more from 26. There's no longer any extended dry spots in the Barbarian progression. Relentless Rage and Indomitable Might could maybe still use a little bit of something, but I'm comfortable making a straight class Barbarian. These few small changes are good enough for me. This playtest also has a new version of the World Tree subclass, which basically just needed a bit of neating up. It was really good, just a little rough around the edges. Level 3, Vitality of the Tree, now gives Barbarian 10 HP instead of healing when they rage. Perfect, that's exactly what it needed to do. The second point, now called Life Giving Force, is functionally unchanged in the text, but in the sidebar it says that the range has been increased to 20 feet. I'm going to assume that in this case the sidebar is correct and they just forgot to change the rules text. That's how I'll be playtesting it. If this is right, great. That means that you can now reach more allies, those who are engaged with different enemies, and maybe even your back row. Level 6, Branches of the Tree, was a feature which teleported a creature adjacent to you if they ended their turn within 20 feet. It was definitely good, but it was a bit clunky, and required some fairly significant party-wide tactical knowledge to use it to its best effect. It now teleports if they start their turn within 30 feet, and you can also optionally zero out their speeds. That means that you can pull enemies towards you, forcing them to attack you instead of your allies, or help your allies get back into position much more easily. This is just much easier to use, again, exactly what was needed. Level 10, Battering Roots, has been clarified to make it more obvious that you can use push or topple and another mastery, all on the same attack. I still think that they could make it even clearer, but this is fine. It did get two nerfs though. It now only works with heavy and versatile weapons, sure, that's fine, and your reach is only extended on your turn. That reach nerf is exactly what I wanted to see. There's no longer weird clunky issues with opportunity attack ranges. Finally, 14th level, travel along the tree is at will bonus action teleports when you're raging. That's kind of incredible, especially alongside branch of the tree. You can drag them over, teleport away, drag them over, teleport away, rinse and repeat. Additionally, once per rage you can do a sort of scatter-like effect, teleporting all of your allies up to 500 feet, although they must start and end within 10 feet of you. You can even repeat this effect multiple times per combat by allowing your rage to end and then reusing it. This subclass is just lovely. It was already good, but now it's also polished. 
absolutely no notes. Print this Watsy. So Barbarian is just all around great. I would be happy with this being in the PHP. I think that the Zealot needs some change from the Playtest 7 version, so that it's not directly competing with the Berserker, but otherwise, it's good. Next up, I think I'm going to do spells. There's a lot of changes here, really big ones, so subscribe so you don't miss that, and it really helps if you can share some of my stuff around. See you in a few days. Bye!